um, in terms of the social aspects, I think, you know, living rurally, we're out at the end of a, a five mile long dirt road. And it can be pretty challenging in those kind of circumstances to feel like you're getting your social needs met. And I think different of the people who live here have different experiences around that. But for myself, for the most part, with the combination of the people who live here year round and a lot of visitors coming through for workshops, work parties, to be here as apprentices or interns for periods of time, I, I find that I get most of my social needs met that way. If I was living as part of a single family in the same context, in the same physical context, that wouldn't be true. So that's another piece for me. And another piece is the, the kind of spiritual and psychological growth that seems to be a necessary component of living and trying to make decisions together with a group of people. So we're a very, very egocentrical and an individual focused culture. Most of us don't grow up as a, in contrast with more tribal cultures and even cultures where, where family is much, much more important than it is here in our culture. We grew up without being taught a lot of the skills that are really necessary to get along in a group of people. And for me, I think even more important than the technical skills of how we're going to build our houses, how we're going to create our energy, how we're going to grow our food, that's, I'd say, the key in terms of having a sustainable future is figuring out how to work together. You look around the world and you see conflict everywhere. And a lot of that conflict comes from competition over scarce resources. A lot of it comes from differences in ideology. A lot of it comes from greed and people, you know, wanting more than their share or wanting more power, wanting to control other people. I think one of the advantages that living and working in a group of people like this has is on this very tiny microcosm scale, you get to see those forces and you get to see that inside yourself. You get to see that coming out, my need for control, my irritation when somebody isn't doing something my way, my fear that other people are gonna use up all the, you know, some use up all the olive oil or the, you know, some other resource that I'm attached to. But because it's a safe context and a group of people who are really committed to living together and working through problems together, there's a lot of encouragement for all of us to express that stuff, to get it out on the table, to talk it through, to negotiate, to come up with good solutions that are going to work well for everybody. One of the main tools that we use for that is the consensus decision-making process which is in contrast to a voting type of a model for decision making, where some in, a, in a, a straight majority vote situation, up to a half of the people could be really unhappy with, it, with any decision that's made. In a consensus decision, every individual has to agree for the, for the group to come to a decision. And that can take a lot of time. More than time, what it takes is trust. It takes a trust that everybody else in the group is not working purely from, or primarily even from their own self-interest, but everybody is holding the interest of the group and of each other. And it, with that trust present, I find that for the most part, consensus is a, is a pretty effective and efficient decision-making process.